Hey, what's up, guys? Jason Redding here with Tactical Hive. Uh, Marine Corps from back in the day, been spent the past couple of years as a full-time instructor, been teaching firearms for a good 20 years or so. Going to cover a little bit about malfunctions with a carbine today, give you a good rundown on a couple of most common carbine malfunctions we see, show you how to handle them. We're going to break the rifle down a little bit. We'll get into it a little bit internal, show you some ways to fix the rifle. Guys, so we know as we're shooting the rifles, we're up here, we got our, our malfunction drills that we normally do, tap rack bang. If it's tap rack bang you're using, it could be a push pull roll rack. Some of those you've heard out there. I'm gonna cover the most common and show you what we see on the range, what goes down, a couple ways to fix those. So I'm up on the rifle. Today I'm using a uh, tap rack or a dry fire insert just to kind of give you a demo of this for dry fire as well. But the rifle is unloaded. I take the magazine, I insert it. And let's just say I'm out on target and I'm running the gun, right? So I'm going to send the bolt forward, run it a couple times, show you it's empty. I'm going to drop the hammer, run it again, safety's on. So I'm up on target, I give you the command to target, fight, threat, bust them, or whatever it may be. We know that immediate action is I punch out on target, thumb sweep, press, I get a click, nothing happens. You got a couple ways to handle this. So you can leave the gun mounted into the shoulder. A lot of guys like to leave the, mounted, the, the rifle mounted in the shoulder up here. They reach up, tap, rack, and re-engage. I'm more of a big workspace guy because while I'm up here, a lot of guys, what we've seen over time is number one, when they go to tap, they'll lose control of the gun. Depends on how hard they're shouldering the gun plus they're still downrange, 360 degree environment. So I can't really run, shoot, move, and do whatever I'm doing if I leave the rifle mounted. So I'm gonna give you just another different taste of this. So I punch out, thumb sweep, press the trigger, it goes click, it does not go bang. I'm immediately gonna attempt to put the gun on safe, bring it into my workspace. I tuck it underneath my arm so that I got good control, do a tap, but I actually tap and pull. So it's kind of a quick push pull, roll rack, and attempt to re-engage. Tap rack, re-engage, usually fixes probably 90% of the problems. The biggest one it's fixing is what? Failure to push pull on the mag. Guys will load a mag to 30 rounds versus 28. They feel that they got it firmly seated. They fail to pull on the mag, so it's slightly in there. They run the charging handle, the gun is loaded. They engage around. A lot of times the gun will go bang and then click and the magazine will fall out. Sometimes it'll stay in. So we gotta come in here, get a good push and pull rolling rack to punch back out, out, back out on target to re-engage. So that tap rack re-engage usually fixes a lot of the problems we have. The next one is a double feed and you can have a couple of vari different variations of a double feed. Now for a long time we had a mantra to fix this, right? What we said was lock, rip, run, tap rack ready. Lock, rip, run, tap rack ready. And guys go, Holy shit, man. That's a lot of stuff to think about. I gotta run that through my brain housing group or my head as stuff's going on downrange. And so let me walk you through this one again. So let's say that I get a double feed. What I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna break this down, I'm gonna set this up for you, is I have to bring the gun into my workspace and I have to lock the bolt to the rear. That's the lock part. I have to rip the magazine, I have to run the charging handle two to three times, get a fresh magazine, reinsert it, rack it, and re-engage. A lot of stuff to think about when modern day we can really just say unload the gun, reload the gun, and shoot the gun.